We're in Taichung. We just finished uh, taking the bullet train and the local train to get here. Uh, pretty easy ride actually. Bullet train was an hour and then local train was like 15 minutes. We really lucked out because um, I was going to rent a scooter here, but uh, the store that was recommended to me, I couldn't find them on Google Map and it felt like a hassle calling them. Anyways, uh, a scooter Facebook group I belong to, um, this nice guy Ben Chi offered up his second scooter as rental. Uh, on the one side, he wanted to uh, you know, make some money on the side and then I didn't want to bother the hassle so we got, a, uh, got everything worked out well. Anyways, uh, we are now on this Yamaha scooter, as you can see. So we're on that Yamaha scooter and we're going to go and check out Taichung for a day. I love these kind of helmets and look at that, that's a bicycle helmet. Definitely not allowed in Canada, but hey, in Taiwan, no problem. So we're going to wear these goofy helmets and then go around Taichung and check out what there is here. We're heading to Fengjia Night Market, which claims to be the biggest in Taiwan. It's right beside Fengjia University. Just look for the intersection of Fuxing Road and Fengjia Road. Oh, this place must be good. Look at the line up here. What is it? It's nice and spread out, which makes it not so crowded. They have many good hawker stalls selling all types of delicious food, along with clothing, shoes, and accessories. You can easily spend the whole night walking around here. This stall had a big lineup and even had a TV appearance, so that always draws the crowd. I think they were selling fried chicken, but I didn't bother waiting in line. These were grilled scallops and my mouth was watering, but unfortunately my appetite was not big enough to try everything I saw. I did try the barbecue meats from this stall and it was delicious. Apparently this will be our towel tonight. A really nice towel, super absorbent. So we booked an Airbnb. And uh, this is what we get for a towel. It's a super absorbent paper. We'll see how well this dries. Here's my nice towel. I feel, I feel more like a table being wiped down than a, you know, than a person getting dried off after a nice shower. I guess they did make up for the towel by providing us uh, this set of toothbrush and toothpaste. Very cute mini set. Although it says I Hotel and I know I didn't book a place called I Hotel or at least this Airbnb isn't called I Hotel. Here's the cute little toothpaste that they provided. Kinda cool. Person likes it. So these are their rain ponchos. It's raining, so I'm gonna put it on. So this is our fancy towel that we got with our Airbnb. It actually came in quite handy because it rained last night and our scooter seat got wet. But hey, it's a nice chamois cloth. So right after we put on our rain ponchos to look like the locals, it stops raining. Go figure that. But let's go. Got to the loot. We just got to the Luce Chapel, and it's closed. Google didn't say what time. I tried a Google search, and there wasn't many talk about when it's open. I, I, someone said it was always open, so obviously that's not correct. Uh, it looks like on the door it's only open Sundays. So we're here. We walked in. Uh, we rode in on our rain poncho, and we walked in with our umbrella and poncho. And unfortunately, this is what we got. What do you think? Wet. Wet. Was it worth it? Yeah. You yeah? get a free foot massage. Oh, right, because your foot's full of water. <laughs> That's a good way of looking at life. 
Okay, well, you know, next time you're in, um, don't know if you want to come here. It is a beautiful structure though, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, I love the sweeping roof forms. I don't know what cla uh, roof cladding it is. I'll take a look at it, but it's definitely a concrete structure. Uh, the inside is quite beautiful the way they've designed it. it the, the roof form swoops down and almost does a little bit of a reveal, almost like a curtain, and then allows the light to come in. So I, I do like the architecture and design of it. I just wish uh, we saw it in the daytime and saw it when it was open so we can have that full experience. Anyways, if you're in Taichung and um, you have nothing else to do, you can come check out the Luche Chapel. It's not easy to get to. You basically have to come to the university. And then um, for some reason, they didn't let us drive in with our scooters. But we saw a parking lot across the street uh, with cars and scooters. So I'm really not sure why. Anyways, uh, we had to park at the outside street, outside of the university gates, and we walked in. The walk wasn't bad. It's actually quite uh, beautiful, uh, especially if it's not raining. It's only about like a maybe eight minute walk or so. So yeah, I, I, I think it's uh, probably worth checking out, especially if you're an architecture buff. Um, although just know that it's hard to get to. Um, you'll either need to take a taxi here. I did see buses on the main street, uh, Fuxing Lu, but um, taxi or scooter or your own car would be easier. The painted animation lane can be found close to the intersection of Lin Sin Road and Liu Chuan East Road. It's an interesting concept where creative artists have painted wall murals with animation characters to help revive uh, otherwise very quiet residential lane. I like the concept, but it was raining and it didn't seem interesting enough for us to stop and explore. So instead, we opted for a scooter drive-by instead. If you're an animation fan, especially for Japanese anime, this would be a good place for you to check out. But on the other hand, if you're not a fan, don't bother because there really isn't much more to it than what you see here. The second market is a century-old market in a historic building that is 15 minutes walk from the train station. It has 50 shops and 300 stalls over 7,000 square meters. Some of the classic foods that they sell here are sausages stuffed with glutinous rice, radish cake, and pork belly on rice. They also have popular breakfast items, and I heard that iced black tea is not to be missed. These items have been sold here for decades already, and it's still super popular. This vendor was definitely the busiest and is located right after you enter the building from Taiwan Boulevard. Looks like they sell glutinous rice sausages, the radish cakes, fish bowl and soup, and oyster omelets. This place is quite unique, so definitely come by and check it out if you want classic Taichung food. We're at this small noodle shop in the second market, Taichung. And uh, this is their signature noodle. It's like a dry noodle with um, pork, shredded pork in it. It's actually pretty good. The noodle itself is very good. It's an egg noodle. Um, I like how they put the uh, bean sprouts in just for a different texture. It's not overly cooked, so it's still nice and crunchy. Mm. Good flavor. We also ordered their wonton noodle. Oh, sorry, not wonton noodle, the wonton soup. It comes with one fish ball. Fish ball so so. So yeah, I wouldn't order the one time, but the noodle, definitely order that. When you're in Taichung, a must-visit place is Chen Shui Tang, which is a restaurant credited to be the creator of the famous bubble tea drink. Of course, everyone now knows what bubble tea is, and it can be found all over Taiwan. We came here so we can try out their legendary bubble tea drink for ourselves and compare them with other bubble tea shops that we've tried in Taiwan. Check out our other vlog where we did this formal review and see how they rate it. The interesting thing I learned is that unlike other bubble tea shops, Chen Shui Tang is actually first and foremost a restaurant but they just happen to serve bubble tea as one of their drinks. Typical bubble tea shops only serves drinks and no food. They actually have a few locations throughout Taichung, but we went to their original store which is on Seaway Street. So again, watch the other vlog on our channel to find out how the bubble tea in Kirsten's mouth rated amongst others. We're in Taichung and this area is called the Calligraphy Greenway. Um, I was a bit baffled by what it is, um, but basically what, it's, it's a whole stretch of outdoor space dedicated to our, uh, towards the arts. Um, on the one end, you've got the natural, uh, the Museum of Natural Science, and then on the southern end, you've got the uh, Museum of Fine Arts. So if you have time and you and you like the arts, definitely come by and check it out. We don't have the time; we're just coming by and uh, and heading towards Sun Moon Lake. 
but we did find this um, very cool statue of uh, Arthas Menethil, which, if you're a Warcraft fan, is uh, a main character in Warcraft. I thought the statue is very well done. Um, it's quite nice. So it's good for at least a photo if you don't have time. Now, in the evening, it's very pleasant. So come by in the evening, and what you'll see is right by the uh, Civic Square, you've got performances, uh, you know, people, buskers, and, and that stuff doing live performances. You've got um, people and artists with their uh, crafts, uh, making their crafts and having their stalls displayed. So it's a very nice uh, evening out kind of place. And then along the edges, you've got shops and um, restaurants and food places. Plus also there's a nice big Esleet store that you can hang out at. So yeah, very cool. Um, I would suggest coming by here, you know, maybe around like um, five or six before it gets dark. Uh, walk around, check out the museum. If you want to do that, come a little bit earlier. And then when it starts to get dark around whenever it is, seven, eight, nine, um, then there's more things happening. More people come out because it gets uh, much cooler in the evening in uh, Taiwan. So yeah, this is uh, again Calligraphy Greenway. I'm here with um, Ben, who I met actually from a Facebook group, and thanks to him, I had a great time tonight. Uh, he rented me his scooter, super convenient. He met me at the train stop, and then uh, you know, at nighttime we went for a midnight ride around town, and he showed me the secret spots, uh, the top of Taizhou, which is Wan Gao Liao Mountain. I'm not sure I said it right, but Ben. Uh, tell us what uh, you know and give me one secret thing about Taito. All right, so let's see. We just went up to the mountain, and so my name is Ben, and we just went up to the mountain. And one secret, and um, get ready, get get ready, pay attention. In Taiwan, if you want any boy's attention, you have to say the following words: "swai ge." That means handsome boy, and that'll get their attention and get anything you want done. Pictures taken, translation, anything. If you yell Swaiga from the top of Wang Chao Gao Mountain, and the echo will boom and all the males from the bottom will turn their heads. So that's my secret tip. Okay, how about girls? If we're after girls, what do we say? Um, well, I would start off with a hi. I, oh. I haven't figured that out yet. I'm still working on it. Is there like a pretty girl in, 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 in Mandarin? What would you call a pretty girl? Um, you know, things are a bit more conservative here. Okay, got it. So like you just... Good for guys, not for girls. Yeah, yeah, handsome boy's okay, but you don't say pretty girl. Like pretty girl would be Mei Nui in Chinese, but you don't really use that. Ah, okay, cool. Awesome. Well, hey, thank you. I had a great time tonight. Uh, there, we'll show a clip of you dragging your knees on a scooter. Oh, First right. time I've seen it. Oh, and you know what? That's a secret spot, right? There's not many places that you can do a figure eight. Yeah. Okay, maybe tell us what street that is in case someone wants to find it. Absolutely. That little interchange is the uh, best spot to practice your, your um, motorcycle skills, if you will. Okay, awesome. Leave it at that. <laughs> cool, thank you. Thank you. So what's going to happen is we're going to go straight and then around here there's a little loop-de-loop -loop that takes us under and up but along the way there's going to be sharp bends we're gonna go under and then we're gonna go up yep. and I'm going to have to like lean around the corners stop around the exits and then gas it on the corners and um, try to maintain my exit speed as I hit Taiwan Boulevard because that brings us up onto the main drag. Okay. So the goal is to get the max speed on the max on the when you exit the corner onto the main drag. Got it. Okay.
heading to the bus terminal to go to Sun Moon Lake. ride today. We got our socks and our shoes all wet. But, it wasn't even open. But thank God we got our trusty premium towels from the Airbnb <laughs> that we can use to wipe our foot. Feel that premium towel. The plushness of it. Yes, oh. Yeah, tell me where you bought that towel. <laughs> it was free. <laughs> okay, we gotta go back to Airbnb. <laughs> it's the best thing that happened to us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so cool. Tune in next week as we continue our three part vlog series of our weekend in Taichung. Next week, we will give you an in-depth review of the famous Miyahara cake and ice cream shop found only in Taichung. Food and design junkies, definitely stay tuned. Do you know how the famous Taiwanese pineapple cake all started? Well, subscribe to our channel and turn on your notification bell so that you'll get the alert when we publish our next vlog talking all about that.